Kills the Giants by Wilson Rodas, Perla Vasquez, and Brian Rodriguez. Coyote was walking one day when he met Old Woman. She greeted him and asked where was he heading. Just roaming around, said Coyote. You better stop going that way or you'll meet a giant who kills everybody. Oh, giants don't frighten me, said Coyote, who had never met one. I always kill them. I'll fight this one too and make the end of him. He's bigger and closer than you think, said Old Woman. I don't care, said Coyote, deciding that a giant would be about as big as a bull moose and calculating that he would kill one easily. So Coyote said goodbye to Old Woman and went ahead, whistling a tune. On his way, he saw a large fallen branch and looked like a, that looked like a club. Picking it up, he said to himself, I'll kick the giant over the head with this. It's big enough and heavy enough to kill him. He walked on and came to a huge cave right in the middle of the path. Whistling merrily, he went in. Suddenly, Coyote met a woman who was crawling along the ground. What's the matter? he asked. I'm starving, she said, and too weak to walk. What are you doing with that stick? I'm going to kill the giant with it, said Coyote, and he asked if she knew where he was hiding. Feeble as she was, the woman laughed. You're already in the giant's belly. How can I be in his belly, asked Coyote. I haven't even met him. You probably thought it was a cave when you walked into his mouth, the woman said, and sighed. It's easy to walk in, but nobody ever walks out. This giant is so big that you can't take him in your own eyes. His belly will fill the whole valley. Coyote threw his stick away and kept on walking. What else could he do? Soon he came across some more people lying around half dead. Are you sick? he asked. No, they said, just starving to death. We're trapped in the giant. You're foolish, said Coyote. If we're really inside the giant, then the cave walls must be inside of his stomach. Then we can just cut some meat and fat from him. We never thought of that, they said. You're not as smart as I am, said Coyote. Coyote took his hunting knife and started cutting chunks off the cave walls. As he had guessed, they were indeed the giant's fat and meat, and he used it to feed the starving people. He even went back and gave some meat to the woman he had met first. Then all the people imprisoned in the giant's belly started to feel stronger and happier, but not completely happy. You fed us, they said, and thanks, but how are we going to get out of here? Don't worry, said Coyote, I'll kill the giant by stabbing him in the heart. Where is his heart? It must be around here someplace. Look at that volcano puffing and beating over there, someone said. Maybe it's the heart. <clears throat> so it is, friend, said Coyote, and began to cut at this mountain. Then he, then the giant spoke. Is that you, Coyote? I've heard of you. Stop this stabbing and cutting and leave me alone. You can leave through my mouth. I'll open it for you. I'll leave, but not quite yet, said Coyote, hacking at the heart. He told some others to get ready as soon as I have him in his death throes. There will be an earthquake. He'll open his jaw and take a last breath. And when his mouth will close, it'll close forever. So be ready to run out fast. Coyote cut a deep hole in the giant's heart and lava started to flow out. It was the giant's blood. The giant groaned and ground under the people's feet trembled. Quick now, shouted Coyote. The giant's mouth opened and they all ran out. The last one the wood tick. The giant's teeth were closing on him, but Coyote managed to pull him out through the last moment. Look at me, cried the wood tick. I'm all flat. It happened when I pulled you through, said Coyote. You almost will be flat for now. Be glad you're alive. I guess I'll be used to it, said the wood tick, and he died. Yeah, I mean.